Hey everyone, I'm Dom from Wondershare Uni Converter. Over 10 years ago, when I first opened up an editing software, I had the same feeling as you. The amount of buttons, features, menus, and strange words can be overwhelming. As a rule of thumb, regardless of which software you start your editing journey with, the only way to master your skills is by doing it, doing it, and doing it. Watch hours of tutorials, try new things, edit dozens of videos. That's how you'll go from beginner to pro. These six tips that I'm going to share with you in this video are not related to executing certain tasks, but helping you in your overall editing process, making it smoother and faster. To help you get started with your first project, first we'll talk about the layout of an editing software and some basic terms. Regardless of your choice of editing software, at the core all of them are very similar. First you open a project. This will contain everything you need for your video or videos. A project has a resolution, aspect ratio, and a frame rate. Within the project, you always have a media browser area where you can access files you imported into the tool. You have a timeline where everything comes together and a monitor window, and then your source monitor as well, if your display is wide enough to fit both at the same time. Usually there is an effects library, an inspector, where you see basic properties of a clip such as size, position, transparency. Depending on the software you're using, there will be a color grader tab and a VFX and sound editor tab. But in all cases, you'll have your rendering tab where you can set your video's output attributes. This is pretty much the layout of all editing software you might come across in a brief. So now let's move on to the next step. So now you kind of know your way around your editing software. So let's see the layers of editing. You first have a project that contains everything as you know already. Then within a project, you can have multiple timelines. In some programs, they're called sequences, but they mean the same thing. A timeline equals one video or one part of a video if you're editing something really, really long. But in all cases, a timeline contains all the editing work that you do. It's the video itself before being exported. Timelines can have different aspect ratios and resolutions from the main project, but sometimes the frame rates must match. Within a timeline, you can create new timelines that are simply merged clips, which then you can open and see the individual clips within. And then you can wrap them in each other and have these never ending layers of clips. Simply put, they're basically timelines within timelines. The reason they're useful is because with these merged clips, compound clips, subsequences, they have multiple names. You create new individual clips out of many within a timeline and then apply effects to them simultaneously. Now, within a timeline, you have multiple video and audio layers. Understanding layers in video editing is really, really important because you'll need to use them when you're making montages, little animations, text overlays, music and sound effects, and you want all of these elements to come nicely together. I personally recommend you spend some time learning about VFX and compositing just for fun because through that you'll learn and understand so much more about visual layers that you'll be able to utilize in normal editing as well. Order is the soul of everything. It's true for editing as well, especially when you're working with a lot of files, maybe on multiple timelines. When you start a new project, start with creating separate folders for your files. For example, a folder for your main video footage, another one for your B-roll, a third one for music and sound effects, a fourth one for assets, and so on. If you're editing multiple videos within one project, for example, make main folders for those, for the videos themselves, and then create the aforementioned ones as subfolders. Putting your timelines in the proper folders with the proper names will help you find them easily, even if you have like 12 of them within one project. Within the media browser, I usually set the order to date added. So if I add a new file, it's always the first one or the last one, depending on how you set it up. Having your files organized will make your editing workflow faster because you won't have to spend time looking for your files all the time. And on the plus side, if you open a project after months or years, you will still find everything with ease. Here are a few important tools that you'll need within the software. Your razor, scissor, cut tool, whatever it may be called, is the tool that you can use to split a clip on the timeline. Fade effects, both for audio and video, can smoothly bring in and out an audio or video clip. 
Now adjustment layers, you should learn how to use these or just use these because they're very simple to use. They're basically layers on the timeline that will affect everything, all the layers below them in a way that you modify the adjustment layers. They're great to apply motion effects, transform effects and color grading to multiple clips simultaneously. And the reason they're super useful is that when you need to change an effect, you just have to change the adjustment layer and leave the original clips alone. Transitions in video editing can take the viewer from one clip to the other in an eye-catching way. It's basically connecting to the fade in and out effects, but this part is more for gimmicky um, transitions that you'll find in an editing software. Linking and unlinking audio and video layers can come in handy for montages when you want to use the audio and video layers separately. Text layers are important for giving extra information to the viewer. Keyframes are used to animate different properties of a clip or effect. First, you need to select the first keyframe, which is going to be the default setting maybe. Then you need to select how long you want the animation be on the timeline, let's say two seconds, and then you set up the end value. So the animation will happen between these two values um, over the amount of time that you set up the animation for. There are many many more tools that you'll find in a video editing software and features but these are just the ones that you might need when you're just starting out. A very effective way to speed up your editing process is setting up and learning a few basic shortcuts on your keyboard. The most important ones that are pretty much the same in all editing software are the I key, which will be your in point, and O, which is your out point. With these, you can select a segment of a video clip within the source monitor, for example, that you'd like to insert onto your timeline. You can use a cursor as well to select these, but it's much faster with the keys. Then using JKL to scan through a video and find your in and out points is a very fast way to make a rough cut of a video. The key J will play the video backwards, K will pause it, and L will play it forward. Usually the more times you press J or L, the faster it will play the video. So you can trim videos this way crazy fast. The shortcut for insert to timeline also belongs in this group. I personally have it on the comma key, but you can set it up for yourself wherever you want. Then using C for the cut tool and V for the selection tool, for example, will help you switch between the two very quickly. M is your marker in all editing software, basically. And again, these are just a few, but the most important ones in my opinion, but I'd recommend you learn as many as you can because they will make your life much, much easier. And finally, a few words about building out the workflow for yourself. Starting with the file organization is always the first step. Then your editing process, how you go from an empty timeline to a ready one, is your thing. The important part is to keep track of what you have done and always look at the parts together to see if the rhythm of the video or film is good or not. Also, keeping yourself to the, well, let's say industry workflow is important. Otherwise, you might have to do parts again. Ultimately, do what works the best for you. For me, it also changes sometimes from project to projects. Just make sure that your workflow is helping you in your work and doesn't hold you up. Now, if you want to start lightly with some very basic editing, you can do that in less complicated software as well. For example, the Uniconverter has a very simple editor where you can easily trim videos, add music to them and then export them. In fact, it has many AI features as well that can help you do this stuff automatically. So if you feel like that what I showed you is too much because you're looking for more basic editing, then start with the Uniconverter and then you can experiment with other tools as well. Okay, those were my tips for starting your editing journey. I hope you found some useful pieces of information and I didn't scare you off. And if I didn't, then make sure that you leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great one, guys.